Hi, this is Shannon Tidwell, Garden Girl at Two Peas in a Bucket, and this week I'm filling in for Scrap Your Stash. Scrap Your Stash is a weekly video series that airs every Thursday. Each video is full of ideas for using items that you'll find in your stash. This week, I'm gonna make an attempt to use up some of my glitter stash. I have seriously had these little jars of glitter from Doodlebug for years. They are something that just kind of seems to multiply inside the jar. When I go to pour the glitter back in, it can't fit back in. So I need to use some of this up. Now, if you don't have any glitter or are looking for some new colors, I noticed some new in the shop from American Crafts, and I think I'm going to probably have to grab some of those neon colors myself. Okay, here I am starting with my plan. You can see that I've grabbed a couple new products that I'm gonna mix with the products that I'm using from my stash. I've got my glitter laid out here in a rainbow pattern. I'm matching the colors that are on the background paper. This is Glitz Color Me Happy line. So what I'm thinking is that I'm gonna use this liquid glue and kind of paint it on the background paper and use that to put my glitter on. Before I get started with anything permanent on the background, I'm gonna go ahead and trim down these photos. Since they are all kind of from different times, they don't really flow together well, but once I get the layout together, they, you'll see how they go together. But I'm gonna go ahead and trim them down to four by fours, just so that they'll be easier to put together in a grouping on the page. And then I can kind of figure out where my photo placement is before I start adding the glitter and the glue to the background. Okay, now it's time to get a little messy, and I have to admit that using glitter is a tad bit messy, but it does clean up easily. A little extra vacuuming is definitely worth the glitter on your page. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting some glue on my finger and then spreading it across the page. I just, if I had had a paintbrush or something like that that wasn't already dried up and ruined, then I could have used that. But since I don't take care of my brushes, I figured my finger will work just as well. So I'm just kind of brushing across in a straight line across from that pink heart, and then I'm gonna sprinkle the pink glitter across that. You can see I was generous with the glitter, kind of shake it around a bit, make sure all the glue is covered, and then I'm going to tap out the excess. And here I've got my painted stripe of glitter. You can kind of use your fingers to clean up and kind of knock off any glitter that you really don't want there. But for my reasoning, I kind of want it to be a messy looking painted stripe. So here I go again, I'm just gonna do the same thing with each color. I'm squirting a little strip of glue down on the paper, rubbing it around, and then putting the glitter down. So I'm just gonna repeat this for each of the colors in the rainbow. Honestly, I thought about just dumping the extra glitter each time instead of saving it since I have so much glitter in my stash. But then I thought, what if one of the kids has a school project that we need large amounts of glitter for? I sure don't want to have to go buy any more. So I was a good girl and put it all back in the bottles or as much of it as I could. You can see between each color, I work a little bit at cleaning it up, kind of getting the excess. The dark blue was a little dark, so I kind of rubbed some of it off to lighten it up a little bit and just use my finger to clean it up. I wanted it to be messy and painted looking like I said, so I think it turned out really cute, and now I'm just gonna let it dry. Okay, once I let it sit for a little bit and dry, I gave it a real good shake over the trash can to try to get off any extra glitter that was around. There's still gonna be some coming off of it, but I'm okay with that, it's not a big deal. So now I'm gonna work on getting my pictures and kind of figuring out what else I'm gonna put on the page. I want the pictures to kind of pop off the page, so of course I'm going to use some pop dots to adhere them down. You can see that I'm overlapping the photos a bit. So on that bottom photo, to keep it even, what I'm gonna do is actually put two pop dots stacked together on the bottom part. So it's gonna pop off actually on top of those other photos, so it'll be a little bit higher. I'm not actually adhering them to the page yet. I'm just kind of getting them laid out and set while I figure out my title. Okay, now I'm gonna to turn to my stash again. For me, a great thing to use up in your stash are your tools. You put a big investment in them, so don't forget to use them. I'm using my silhouette for my title, 
And I wanted to mention on the word unicorns, you can see that I have the arrow going through it. It's because I wanted those letters to be welded together, but I didn't want them to overlap. So I just put another little arrow clip art above, above it and welded that together. So that held them together perfectly. Okay, I really like the way my title turned out, but I want something to kind of separate it from the colorful background. So what I'm going to do is use this Fun Vellum by Dear Lizzie and just freehand a little banner, real light with pencil on the back side, and then I'll cut that out. So I just erased the pencil marks on the back. And then I added a little machine stitching around the edge with gold thread to give it a little extra detailing and a little more texture to help it separate from the background as well. So now for my title, I'm going to add pop dots behind it, which it's got some pretty teeny weeny parts. So I'm just gonna have to trim those pop dots down real skinny to get them to fit. I'll probably just leave the fairy dust blank and let, just kind of let that dangle, but I'm gonna put pop dots under the two larger words. So now I'm going to try to get things arranged on the page. I found this fun heart. This is also by Glitz, part of the Color Me Happy. I'd actually trimmed off an outline of that heart for another layout. So I'm thinking I'm doing good to use the leftovers on a second layout. And then I also found this rainbow trim by KI Memories that I think will look really cute across the top. Although I think the full width of it will kind of be too much. So what I'm going to do is trim a little bit. I trimmed a half an inch off my background page, off the top, and now I'm trimming the plastic part from behind the um, border. I'm leaving part of it so it stays on the sticky. And then I'm gonna add adhesive to the front of that border so that it can adhere to the back of my background page. So then it'll be an equal 12 inches again. And then I ran the top of the page through the sewing machine, so that way it'll help hold that plastic piece on the back to cover that adhesive so it doesn't get stuck in my scrapbook. I'm pretty happy with how things are looking, so I'm going to take the leap and start adhering things down, starting with the photos, just peeling off those pop dots and getting them stacked in there. And then I'm adding a bit of adhesive to the vellum. I'm just putting it behind where the printed dots are so it doesn't show. I'm going to add a tad bit of machine stitching to it later because adhering things to glitter is always tricky. So I'm just putting enough down to kind of hold it in place so that I can later add a little machine stitching. Same thing with my heart, just a tad bit of adhesive and then I'll machine stitch an edge of it to hold it in place. And now for peeling off all those pop dot tabs. Sometimes adhering down large titles like this that are all welded together can be a little tricky, especially if there's some delicate words in there like I have, but just kind of lightly lay it down and, and move it around before you push down and adhere it well. It's usually pretty forgiving, especially the pop dot. So I just kind of moved it around until I felt like it was in a good spot. And then I'm going to add just a tad bit of liquid glue to the fairy dust down there because it is so delicate. I wanna make sure that that doesn't get torn off the page. And here I'm trimming the thread where I mentioned I was gonna machine stitch. I did just the top corner of that heart with a zigzag stitch and then the right hand side of the banner. And I decided to use some of the new glitter thicker stickers by American Crafts for the punctuation and symbol in my title. And then to help my photos kind of merge together as one unit, I decided to use some photo corners also from my stash. You can see that these have been pretty picked over, but I thought the green ones would add a nice splash of color up there. And I'm just going to add one to each of the outside corners of the photos. Nothing says using what you've got like using some packaging for your page. I love using packaging for my journaling strips. So here, found this KI striped packaging in my stash and I'm going to cut a piece in a banner shape and it'll be a great place for a little intro to my title as well as to add an embellishment up there on that left side because it kind of needs something up in that spot. And then I added a little machine stitching still with that gold thread. It adds a nice sparkle and really makes it stand out up there. I was going to hand write something up there on that banner, but then I found these stamps by Amy Tangerine that I haven't even broken into yet. I know, 
terrible, but there was this one cute stamp that says, all you need is love and, and I thought it would really go great with the rest of my title. Okay, and this will probably show you why I'm usually not much of a stamper. So I've got my image and I'm ready to stamp it down. And then one of the letters didn't transfer correctly, so I thought I'd try to stamp over it and do it again, being real fancy. And all I do is make a big mess of it. So now I think two overlapping banners would look really cute up there in that spot, don't you guys? And it actually does turn out looking better. So basically I'm just doing the same thing. I'm gonna stamp it again on this smaller banner that I cut. And it still doesn't transfer the one letter. So instead of trying to stamp it again, I'm just going to get a Sharpie and fix it myself. With a little machine stitching, a couple pop dots, I'm going to layer these two banners up and they will end up looking cuter than if I had stamped that first banner correctly. I remembered recently seeing this cute ribbon, rainbow ribbon in my stash. And so I grabbed it out and thought maybe I could find a way to use it, but I couldn't really figure out a way to use it. But it reminded me that it was part of a Love Elsie line, Zoe. So I went digging through my stash and grabbed out a few things that had rainbows on them and found this fun little softy embellishment that'll look really cute on there. So I really went way back in my stash and found something from years ago that I could use. On a layout like this where I've got a lot going on, I usually like to put the journaling somehow on the back of the layout or hidden. So I had this fun idea for putting a tag on the back of the layout and just kind of twirling it around. At first I thought I might tie it on with the ribbon, but then I didn't really want too much extra up there. So then I decided that a brad would be perfect. So what I did is just figured out where I wanted it and use my crocodile to punch a hole through all the layers up there. And then I'm going to just put the tag on the back side and put the brad through it. So you can see that it adds just a fun little touch to my journaling. You can just spin it around and I'll write the journaling there at the top. So kind of upside down on the tag, but it'll be right side up whenever you're reading it. And now I'm going to get busy writing. Once I finished writing, I went back with a gold sharpie and added a little detailing, some dots, and then that kind of gave me the idea to maybe add a little bit of glitter. So I used some chunky glitter, also from Doodlebug, just did the same concept, kind of spread around some of that liquid glue with my finger and then sprinkled the glitter on it. I just needed a little extra fairy dust up there. And I think that completes this layout. I'm pretty proud of myself for using up some of that glitter in my stash, as well as putting some of my tools to use, my silhouette, as well as my crocodile. And I also dug pretty deep in my stash and found some older items, some from several years ago and some from just last year, that I was able to mix together with some brand new products and come up with a fun and colorful layout this week. I've enjoyed stepping in this week for Scrap Your Stash. I hope that you guys will join in on the challenge to use some of your glitter that you've got saved up. Um, I can't wait to look at your layouts. Thanks again for hanging out with me. This is Shannon Tidwell, Garden Girl at Two Peas in a Bucket. Bye.